Right then chaps, good morning. We're in today on a Wednesday morn to carry on the brews. So we've got hot water ready from yesterday's brew day which we recaptured from the heat exchanger. And of course we had the issue with this, the false bottom. Now yesterday it took me over an hour to run off because of the blockage that we'd got from the uh, the misfit inside the mash tun with the false bottom. So basically this edge here, between kind of that burn mark and that burn mark, needs to be about five mil bigger. So, I'm thinking to myself, if I don't do anything, it's gonna take me an hour longer to sparge anyway, or do I spend that hour addressing this issue Maybe lay enough weld bead down and grind it down, try it for a few fits, wash it and then mash in. If I can do all of that within an hour, I've saved money and completed a task, right? So I think that's what I'm going to do this morning. I'm going to sit down at the welding bench and I'm going to take a different approach on adding material to the stainless. Before I was trying to put an edge bead on, what I think I'll do instead is clamp an aluminium plate to the back and then try and... Uh, weld onto that because it'll give me a back then for the metal to solidify again to prevent any coking there and uh, then we'll dress it with a flapper wheel and see if we can get a perfect fit that would be freaking neat peculiar place to have a party Seems to be working. Yeah, seems to be working. So, uh, Gemma's just made me a coffee. She's off to take her mum to the hospital today. We have a routine up on the old knee. And uh, she's brought me a sandwich before she's gone. So, while I've got your attention for a moment, I just want to send everybody across to the Patreon page. So what I'd like to do this year is drive the Patreon a little bit so I can spend more time making the videos and less time worrying about worrying about uh, making money and making a living. So what I've done is set up a poll over there to ask you guys, if you're supporting me on Patreon, what do you want in return? And, and you get the videos, right? Everyone gets the videos for free. But for everybody who's supporting me on Patreon, they're going to get a little something extra. So head over there, have a look at the poll, have a vote. And while you're there, why not buy me a coffee? That'd be bloody nice of you. Cheers. way longer than I wanted it to. I've cracked it. I don't think there's a gap any bigger than two millimeters around the edge and I think we've got a 1.5 mil I think we've got a 1.5 mil hole and uh, three mil pitch so taking that into consideration we should be golden. We should be good to go. So I'm just going to give the false bottom a wash. Rinse out the mash tun just in case there's any grains of Stainless in there, any filings, which doesn't really matter, let's face it, it will settle out in the boil kettle, but yeah, much tighter around the edge now. As you can see, one or two spots, they're the biggest spots there and there, so they are literally about two millimeter gap. I think to say that it wasn't perfectly cylindrical. I've got a good, nice fit there. So, finally can start the brew day. Just going to have a double check what time it is. I think it's a lot later than I anticipated. Yeah, I've overrun by about 45 minutes. But let's think about it. I've got two more brew days, including today. 
So if I've saved an hour each day, I'll still save myself 15 minutes doing that, right? <laughs> it's always every cloud has a silver lining. Right, let's get mashed in. Freak yeah. So we've got a few developments folks. I decided to do the coconut shy, so in order to get more coconut flavour out of the toasted coconut, I went and picked myself up a, uh, well Gemma fetched it for me, a food processor. And we've run the coconut through there, it's sat in here now. I wouldn't say it's a fine powder, but it's about the size of oats, porridge oats, if you know what I mean. So hopefully, that shouldn't be too much of a problem to get it out of the boil kettle. If you remember last time Tom was here, we had to try and get all of the oats, <laughs> all of the coconut, out the bottom of the boil kettle with a pokey stick. There we go, look at that. Can you see the condenser flue? It's kicking off a little bit, look. Created a little bit of pressure in there. It's released a little bit of steam. So, yeah, I'm just going to digress slightly and talk about the condenser for a moment because whilst it's working very well, I think I could probably do with a bit more water uh, to create a bit more of a vacuum in the flue. The water's coming out cold, so it's definitely doing that part of it, no problem. But I could do with a better seal, actually, around the... Uh, around the top of the tank so that it's got no choice but to go through the flue. And what I've done as well down at the bottom, I've just loosened one of the nuts, I think I explained it on yesterday's vlog, to allow, uh, so there's no pressure in the chimney, so it naturally wants to go to the chimney rather than push out of the sides. Very strange though, uh, because I've got the energy right down at 30%, so we've got, 24 kilowatts on there, but we're only using 30% of it. So my maths is going to say we're boiling with about 9 kilowatts, thereabouts, 8 to 10. So I think it's uh, pretty impressive that it can hold a boil for 500 litres at that uh, with that amount of energy. Whereas previously we were sort of up at 80% when it was open top. So I guess, uh, I guess time will tell whether there is any evidence of diacetyl in the beers. The last two batches that we put through, the bitter and the vacant, they're on the bar now. I've drank them myself and uh, I think even Froggy's tried it on the weekend and we think that it's a particularly good freaking batch of vacant, you know. So no adverse effects on flavour. But that's what troubles me. Just as it keeps puffing out, the smoke just keeps puffing out. I don't like it very much because we are still steam. We are still getting steam in the building. Now I might just revisit how the lid is attached. Maybe that will resolve the issue. 
Right, so a uh, second development that I've got as well is uh, I might possibly have a log burner from uh, a chap I know through social media. So if it comes to fruition, I've got to find somewhere to install it because I really need it installing. I'm freezing in here. I mean, it's uncomfortable for like the tip of my nose. It's going to drop off, man. So one of the places where we could possibly install this is, uh, whew, that was a bit quicker than I wanted it to, is up there. So above that window, that actually goes outside. You can see around the back, <coughs> the black corner, just in there. That goes outside, up and round. So it's sort of, what's the word you'd use? It's sort of been uh, lagged on the outside, not with flashed, it's been flashed on the outside. Uh, and that's the highest point of the roof of the building, if you get where I'm coming from. I can't put the chimney out through the workshop and up there because it's like a little cul-de-sac eddy area where all the smoke's just going to hang around and there's nowhere for me to get a stack high enough. So it literally is like this wall is kind of my only option which isn't great because it's one of the most difficult places on the roof to get to so I could kind of I don't know maybe install the burner in here somewhere and then just send the flu can you send a flu sideways I don't really want to so yeah I'm gonna have to kind of address this issue because I'm not sure how we're gonna duct any smoke out in fact, I can show you a couple of photos, I'll put them in here. And these are a few photographs of the roof, so you can kind of see what I'm dealing with. And yeah, I don't really want to be up on there doing too much work, if I can help it. So, it's a little bit of a tricky one. I mean, quite frankly, all I wanted to do really was heat the workshop. But this stove is a pretty substantial stove, like. So, uh, fingers crossed, we can get it up and running. We'll see. Anyway. Back to the brew day. Okay, uh, so I've got to wash the boil kettle out and I'm done. So if you want to come down, it'll go quicker. If you want to come down, and you can, uh, I'll be about done when you get here. Okay. She is a blonde goddess and she is 
Bye. Bye. Nearly home time. Actually, it's no worse than uh, you know leaves being washed into the sewers the side of the road. Five kilograms of macerated coconut is not a problem I'm going to make for the sewage works. So uh, that's gone out of my air. One thing we do have to sort, though, is the growing problem of the grain. So that'll be Stubo's job in the next couple of days. Nip it up. Might even do it tomorrow or Friday because we've got to go somewhere on Friday. All going well. There was an auction on uh, Bid Spotter for 120, yes, 120 second hand uh, casks. So I emailed Kegwatch. They didn't get back to me in time, so I took a lucky punt on it. Anyway, I managed to pick them up for 60 to 70 quid total. I mean, for 120. So even if half of these do actually belong to somebody else, like Molson Coors or something like that, they can have them back, whatever. But uh, the rest of them, I believe, are from a legitimate sale. They've come from a legitimate uh, auction company. I've got a purchase order and an invoice, so I'm in the clear. But yeah, you've always got to be careful with these kind of things. Because if they do belong to somebody else, I'll do my best, obviously, to return them. But I think I've just got a bargain. I think. So we'll go on Friday, and check it out, have a look at what we've got. And uh, yeah, you never know. Might be able to make an underback out of one of these kegs, eh? Right, wrapping it up, lights off. I'm off home, we'll see you tomorrow.